Hello and welcome back. In this session, we will look at uh, an introduction to uh, containers. So we will look at what is a container and then we will look at um, uh, some of the technical details around your containers. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first thing that uh, we will need to understand whenever we talk about containers is that containers aren't really um, a, a real thing. Okay, so containers do not exist. All right. So when we look at your Linux machines, let's say we install Docker or we install Kubernetes and uh, uh, if we try to get the manual pages for the container, there are no manual pages uh, in the kernel for your containers. Now. Uh, what that means is containers are uh, are not necessarily a linux feature or a windows feature so basically containers are not a real thing this this is simply using some existing uh, technologies that are available to create our containers okay so if containers are not a real thing then what is a container well Containers are simply a grouping of uh, some of the low level technologies that are available and we commonly refer them as a container. So these low level technologies together, we call them as your containers. Now we will look at these low level technologies in, in some time. Now, a very crucial point to note when we talk about your containers is that they are not first class citizens. In the system they are not a single binary or a standalone piece of software and that is one of the main difference that we have when we compare a container with a virtual machine so it's neither a software neither a binary nor a first class citizen unlike your uh, virtual machines so a virtual machine is a first class concept whereas containers are not so like I said earlier, containers are made up of low level technology. So on the Linux side, these low level technologies are namespaces. We have control groups or C groups. We have the Linux kernel capabilities and then we have the Linux security module. So these are the low level technologies uh, that we make use of when we talk about your containers we will talk about these um, uh, in detail in a moment so your container is just made up of all these four level technology together at the same time and this provides us with an isolated environment which is nothing but a container so this is where i was telling you that container is not a real thing but rather uh, making use of this low level technologies which helps us to create a container now this is very different concept when compared to the virtual machines containers provide us with a lot of flexibility now maybe we do not want to share all the namespaces or maybe we want to uh, reduce the control groups we can tweak and use all these parameters the way we want it and we would still end up with an isolated container so it provides us with a lot of uh, uh, flexibility when we talk about your containers now let's look at how virtual machines differ from uh, containers architecturally so in this diagram uh, we have your infrastructure and then we have a number of virtual machines so in this case i have three uh, uh, linux virtual machines and all these virtual machines are running on the same infrastructure so um, and then each of these machine has an app and their various uh, programming language framework so we have a python app we have a java app and then we have a uh, .NET core app as well and uh, each of this application is running on an independent linux operating system and each of these um, uh, app has their own operating system it has its own kernel and the isolation is provided at the uh, infrastructure level all right so uh, we, we basically divide the hardware resources we we share the resources at the uh, hardware level that's how a virtual machine works now when we talk about your containers here also we will have your infrastructure uh, we are running the same three uh, uh, applications but they are now running as a containerized application all right so we are not doing the isolation at the uh, infrastructure 
level all right so we have the python app we have the java app and then we have the dotnet core app and all these three apps are sharing a, a linux distribution so we have one os and all the three apps are running are using the same operating system so we have one linux kernel that all the three apps are using and they're able to share the os and kernel because of the low level concepts that we have which is your namespaces c groups and uh, uh, other concepts so we're using your namespaces and control groups to isolate each of these uh, applications so the isolation is provided by the namespaces and uh, 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 control groups so the dependencies that are needed by one application will not conflict with the dependencies of other application and this is one of the big difference between containers and virtual machines the isolation is provided at the os level and not at the infra level uh, virtual machines provides the isolation at the infra level right now sometimes this may not be enough so if you are working in a very regulated working environments or in a very highly secured environments you will need to uh, put the infrastructure boundaries between the workloads but if you are okay with sharing the kernels then containers will be the right option for you so you know you don't have any concerns with your applications using the same kernel then using the containers would be the uh, perfect option for us now in the earlier session we uh, introduced the idea of your uh, namespaces now let's look at uh, a bit more detail about your namespaces so your namespace this is a feature which is provided by your linux kernel and this helps you to partition the kernel resources now what that means is you are simply putting a limit uh, uh, on what a process can see all right so when we talk about namespaces there are a lot of uh, uh, different different namespaces that we have so some of the uh, common uh, namespace includes the process id namespace or the networks namespace but they are all about limiting the visibility to a process now here i have a screenshot which shows all the running process that is happening on a linux machine so i, I launched an ec2 instance and i ran this command ps ef and i can see i can see all the process that is running on this machine so there are a lot of processes starting with a uh, process id uh, 1 which is the init system and then we have lots of other process now here i have another uh, screenshot now in this case i have started a, a container and if i run the same command ps hyphen ef command we can see that the container cannot see the processes of the host machine so host machine you can say have so many processes but the container uh, the number of processes is very uh, uh, limited all right so even though the container is running on the same operating system and on the same kernel so now here we have provided an isolated environment for our application that is our container and this is done through the process id namespace in this particular case and we have the same concept for the networking uh, namespace the user stack and few other things so now when i'm running my application as a container the application is isolated from all other containers on the machine through the process id namespace and various other uh, linux namespaces the application we are running in the container thinks that it is the only workload running on the host machine but actually when we look at the host machine we can see that there are many other workloads that are running so this this is how uh, we are providing the isolation to the uh, containers next uh, we will look at the concept of your uh, control group which is the second core concept of your uh, containers now uh, we call it as your control groups also known as your uh, c groups so c groups can be used when we want to put a limit on the resources that a process can view so when i say resources your cpu time your memory the network bandwidth the disk uh, input output so if you want to put a limitation on that that's where uh, c groups comes into the uh, picture so this is a feature of your linux kernel and we can use this feature to put the limit on the usage of your cpu memory disk io network resources and all so let's say we have uh, two containers running on the uh, same machine right and uh, 
um, we want to give one GB of memory to one of the container and one GB of memory to another container. And I want to hard limit the resources. So this is where we can make use of your control groups. So by allocating the resources to the containers, we can prevent one container stealing all the resources on the machine and making other container workloads underperformed. So if you don't want that to happen, we can make use of your control groups. So if you look at this screenshot, here I have the host machine and I'm using this free hyphen H command, which will show me the memory that is allocated to this host machine. So in this case, I'm running an EC2 instance uh, with the t2.micro, which gives me one GB of uh, RAM. So the host machine has one GB of um, uh, memory. Now in the second screenshot um, uh, here, now, um, what I've done here is I've started a new container and I have passed um, a flag hyphen M256M, which tells the container that I'm allocating 256 MB of memory and that is where C groups comes in to limit the resource utilization. So this screenshot is from a container. So uh, I've, I've, not, I've not provided the Docker command here, but when I'm running the Docker run command, I can pass the hyphen M flag with the MB of memory that I wanna pass and only that much of memory will be allocated to the container, all right? Now, by doing this, I'm able to restrict what the process can see or what the container can see. And now I can create a multi-tenant or multi-container server host without worrying about one container stealing all the resources. So this is where we can make use of your control groups or your C groups. The last thing I wanna cover in this session is the different terminologies that we have in the container landscape. So first we will talk about the container uh, runtime. So a container runtime is simply a software that we can install on the underlying software uh, server, sorry. And the purpose of the container runtime is to create, start and stop the containers. And some of the popular container runtime includes Docker Engine, Container D, and Podman. Then we have the container image. So your container image is simply a distributable artifact, and this contains the packaged application. All right. So to start the container, we need an artifact and this artifact needs to contain everything that is needed for our application to run. And that's where we have our container image, which we can then distribute around the container runtimes, download the container images, expand or extract the container images to start our containers. Then we have our container itself. So container, like I said in the beginning of the session, it's not a real thing. All right. But in the concept of this technology, we can think of it as a running process in an isolated um, environment. So a container is simply a process that we have extracted from a container image that has all the resource limitation using control groups and one which is limited by the namespace. All right. And that brings us to the end of our uh, session. So in this session, we have, we have walked through the various concepts and uh, new technology in relation to containers. And we also saw how containers differ from virtual machines. Uh, we looked at some of the low level technologies that we have in containers. So once again, containers are not really a thing. It is simply making use of the low level technologies, which is your namespaces, control groups, the uh, Linux uh, security modules, the, the kernel capabilities, using all these low level technologies, which helps us to create an isolated environment. And this isolated environment, we call it as your containers. I hope now you have a better understanding of what is a container um, and uh, what goes behind uh, in, in making a container. That's all I have for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.